kingdom over again to me wonderful words of god let me more of the beauty see wonderful words of life words of life and beauty teach me faith and duty beautiful words wonderful words wonderful words of life beautiful words wonderful words wonderful words of life Christ the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of life sing the list to the loving god wonderful words of life all so freely given going us to heaven beautiful words wonderful words wonderful words of life beautiful words wonderful words wonderful of life sweetly echo the gospel call wonderful words of life offer pardon and peace to all wonderful words of life jesus only savior sanctify for wonderful words wonderful words of life beautiful words wonderful words wonderful words of life out of his fullness we have received grace in place of grace already given for the law was given through moses grace and truth through jesus christ we continue with um, our meditation and study of uh, psalm 23 hopefully you have remembered that by heart already so we will um, have a few more sessions until we finish the psalm today we are looking at the uh, verse 4 where it says thy rod and thy staff they comfort me though i uh, we remembered about the valley of the shadow of death last sunday and it, it is a continuation of that verse it says that though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me so what is the rod and the staff uh, that the psalmist is talking about when it comes to a shepherd there are two tools that he uses to tend the sheep uh, one is the rod and the other is the staff the rod is like a um, straight stick that the shepherd uses sometimes to discipline the sheep and many times to defend the sheep from wild animals so it is used for uh, defending and disciplining a straight rod and if you look at the our uh, bulletin today the front uh, picture will show you the rod and the staff so that that little stick that straight stick that you see there is the and it usually has a sling and they usually keep it on to their clothing wherever they can hang it and they will use it only when needed the discipline and defending the sheep and the staff is another one that you will see that with uh, a curve or a crook at the top according to many scholars and theologians these are two important tools that as people of god as sheep of god of the good shepherd living in this world we are to be guided by and the rod is discipline and um, defendant defending the hook or the the uh, crook or the the staff is used for caring and feeding you have seen that staff being a symbol of many church leaders like uh, the bishop of our church when she or he gets ordained they have the staff in their hands and many episcopal churches have that the catholic church used to have the same kind of staff with a crook 
at the top and it's all it's used to be called a crook that's what it used to be called because of the curve at the at the top but the catholic church has modified it so many different times i don't know exactly what they're using now i think it is pope pope is using something with a cross at the top but that is a significant uh, um, that signifies the caring and the tending and the feeding of the sheep uh, with that staff and as i told you the rod is usually hung from his clothing but, um, because he uses it only when it's needed for defending and disciplining the sheep but the staff he carries always in his hands showing his care and his uh, concern about the sheep's daily sustenance and uh, their safety that is why the bishops or the leaders of the church carry that uh, that staff in their hands as a symbol of caring for the sheep uh, like i said the rod is used for defending and disciplining in one sense these two tools are significant uh, they signify two different things one is the law that disciplines us in the old testament the law that was given through moses it it tells you do this do this do this if you don't do this you will get punished that's what the moses law is all about but we know that the moses law is not complete without the grace of god because we all know that we cannot com- uh, uh, perfectly follow every law that god has given us in this world we falter and we fail and if god is going to punish us for everything that we do wrong here how many times you are you going to get punished would you <laughs> and and uh, and the bible says that the uh, the punishment of sin is death so we will be ultimately sentenced to death if we continue to get punished for our sins but that is why he sent his son jesus christ into this world because the law is not complete without god's grace and grace and truth came through jesus christ we read that in john's gospel today so the rod is disciplining the law the old testament and the staff is caring and tending is about grace of god so we need both there is no grace without law there is no law without grace they are together that is what fulfilled in jesus christ we need the law we need the law to discipline us remember if there was no law how crazy the world would go people go mad I and mean, even with the laws we are we cannot live together and if there was no law to discipline us you know how much so the rod is needed and also more than anything else our grace is also needed because god's grace is the one that sustains us the authority and the power and the discipline of the rod is similar to the word of god the word of god disciplines us in proverbs we read that solomon is saying that god's word is good for our body for they are life to those that find them and health to their flesh we read that in proverbs 4 that's what it says that means if without the law we will be killing ourselves you know do not steal uh, do not covet do, do not murder and these are all the the things of the law that god gave us to be together living together otherwise we'll be killing each other even though even still we are killing each other yeah. but at least there are some laws more all the laws that we see here are basically founded on the mosaic law i mean you all if you go back and look at the history and um, many many laws and because of the laws it gives us safety it gives us a good place to live together and also it is good for our body you know do not you know kill your bodies by taking certain things or stealing those things are not good for us and god has given us this law so that it is good for us to discipline us and in second timothy paul says that the word of god is breathed by god and it is used for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness the word of god is absolutely needed every day and we need to meditate on that so that we can correct ourselves we can save ourselves from danger when we go astray from danger god's word will restore us and bring us back to safety so we need god's word to correct us to train us to rebuke us and lead us in righteousness and also the bible says that the word of god is a double edged sword it says that in hebrews chapter 4 that the word of god is alive and sharper than any double edged sword it penetrates even into the um, to dividing the soul and the spirit joints and marrow 
it judges the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts so the word of god is a double edged sword also not only it defends us from the evil one but also it defends us from ourselves because the double edged sword that can kill and that cut both ways so it can also penetrate into our souls that we will be corrected when we go wrong and our conscience will be pricked and we feel the pain when we do wrong and that is what the word of god does it is sharper than any um, double edged sword but at the same time the word of god also takes us to the living word jesus christ the grace of god god's truth that is revealed through jesus christ so if we go and meditate on the word of god it will take you to the grace of god which is jesus christ so without the word of god we cannot ever go to jesus christ the word of god is given to us so that it will take us to the revelation and the knowledge of jesus christ in this world as we live our so that is what the rod does as the it also as i said it's the word of god the discipline the law that disciplines us and also it defends us from ourselves and also from enemy then the staff is the long slender stick that i told you it used to be called a crook uh, they are called cross ears also that uh, the new term that we use in our church is called pastoral staff that's what is called pastoral staff the pastor staff that is used for caring and tending sheep as a symbol of care and tend the bishop of the church head bears the staff as a shepherd of the flock uh because he or she is the representative of the great shepherd of the sheep as we read that in hebrews the word actual pastor uh derives from the latin word pastora which is shepherd so the word pastor itself means shepherd and pastoring means shepherding to lead to pastor to to feed to set to grazing and and give them food and water that is what a pastor does to feed the sheep and in whatever way to tend the sheep so regardless a staff is a unique instrument used totally for the care and management of the sheep it represents the concern and the care a shepherd has toward his sheep it also gives the assurance to the sheep that the shepherd's presence is always there with them so when the sheep and the shepherd have uh, gone through and started uh grazing and fed and have water they usually find some shade to go and settle down and have some rest then and i've heard that the 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 shepherd stick that um staff in a place where all the sheep can see when they rest so when they turn around and look at the staff they know that the shepherd is nearby he has not abandoned them so that is the presence of god that we feel Uh, as a shepherd uh, is always with us when we are at rest he gives us rest and peace in our lives so a staff gives us rest as we read in psalm 23 that starts right off requiring that the lord is our shepherd and i shall not want it is a reminder uh, the staff is a reminder to the sheep saying that the she- sheep is there still there to care for them so do not be afraid when the shepherd and the sheep rest in a quiet shade after feeding and drinking the shepherd stands the staff on a visible place where all the sheep can see it when they see the staff they know that the shepherd is there nearby they don't have to be afraid of any enemies and they can be at rest so when we are at rest because remember we if we need rest we need to understand that our shepherd is nearby caring for us he is not far many times we think that god is far away from us when we go through troubles but it, the reality is that he is close to us as a breath and when we turn to him we can feel his presence even in the darkest moments of our lives and it is the staff is our rescue god uses his staff to rescue us from the difficult and dangerous situations as well god brought the shepherd in jesus christ not only the shepherd of the sheep but he is the great shepherd of the sheep through uh death and his resurrection we have been given the privilege to be children of god and give gave us an eternity to always spend our time with god songwriter crosby uh gave us a beautiful hymn that i like all the way my savior leads me cheers each winding path i tread gives me grace for every trial feeds me with the living bread though my weary steps may falter and my soul 
thirst may be gushing from the rocks before me lo a spring of joy i see gushing from the rock before me lo a spring of joy i see so when we are troubled with the situations in our lives god asks us to go and take some rest step back in a shade because god's presence is going to be there with us he will never abandon us he is the good shepherd of the great flock because he has given his life for us he has given his life for his sheep and he will continue to guide us and comfort us through our difficult times of our lives so as we meditate on this this psalm which is a very meaningful psalm for many of us let us always understand that god's presence will never leave us even when we become unfaithful god will never become unfaithful he is always faithful and he will make sure that he will take us to the next place where he will re, uh, receive us in eternity with him so the may the good lord bless us with these words as we go from this place to be comforted by the presence of his word and also the presence of his grace in the places where we are amen amen this is we to trust in jesus and to people of god go in the knowledge that the great shepherd is there always with us even when sometimes we get disciplined the rod the word of god is there to discipline us but also to defend us but always the grace of god the staff is there to care for us and to tend, tend us uh, every day may the god of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our lord jesus christ that great shepherd of the sheep equip you with everything good for doing his will and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever may the grace of our lord jesus christ love of the heavenly father and the everlasting comfort and fellowship of the holy spirit go with you now and forever more amen amen, amen.